Hey girl, there's this rumor going around about you, and I think you should nip it in the butt. Wait, what did you say? You know, nip the rumors in the butt so it would stop spreading. No, 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 Karen, it's nip it in the bud. You know, when you nip a flower bud so it doesn't blossom or grow anymore, it's nip it in the bud. No, I've been saying nip it in the butt forever because I thought, you know, if you nip someone in the butt, wouldn't that hurt? Wouldn't that stop them from doing something wrong? <gasps> no! Oh, Karen, don't worry. You are not alone in this. You know, there are so many people out there who have been saying common English expressions incorrectly. Now, don't be too hard on yourself. These expressions can sometimes be tricky even for native speakers, especially if you're just repeating something you heard. Now, you heard it incorrectly, but somehow in your head, it made sense. So today, we are going to save our ourselves from future embarrassment by learning how to properly say 10 English expressions that you may have been saying incorrectly all this time. So if you're ready to learn, let's get started. So let's do this. Hey, what's happening? I'm always glad to see you back here. And if this is the first time we're meeting, my name is Anna. Welcome to the channel, where my goal is to help fellow non-native English speakers to improve their interaction skill, to foster interesting conversation and better communication through practical and simple English. So for more videos like this one, please do hit the subscribe button down below and also hit the notification bell just so you know if I have anything new out. By the way, have you checked out my English Grammar Hack series? If you haven't yet, I've linked it down at the comment section down below so you can check it out and that will help you immensely in your quest to improve your English. But for now, let's get down to business. I have done some research and unearthed these 10 common English expressions that are often said incorrectly. Let's go about it this way. First, I will show you how not to say it. And then I will show you how to properly say it. And then maybe I'll throw in a little bit of a background on how this expression came to be. Yep, it's the whole package in this channel. So let's start it off with expression number 10. Don't say, nip it in the butt. Say, nip it in the bud. Well, Karen already explained this one. It's nip it in the bud. You know, when you nip a flower bud so it doesn't blossom or grow anymore, it's nip it in the bud. Number nine, don't say worse comes to worse because it means nothing has changed. Instead, say worse comes to worst because then it's clear that a bad situation can still indeed deteriorate to the lowest level possible. Worse comes to worst. For example, worst comes to worst, we can always sell the car. Number eight, don't say happy second anniversary. Because by definition, an anniversary is the date on which the event took place in the previous year. So the use of the word year and anniversary is redundant. So just say happy number of years and then anniversary. Happy second anniversary. So that means if it's the first year, you can just say happy anniversary. Don't say, or should I say, don't just say condolence. Or for us Filipinos, condolence. When someone you know lost someone they love and you want to show sympathy, there are so many ways you can express this. But if you really are bent on using the word condolence, use it this way. My condolences. My condolences to you and your family. But you can also say, I'm sorry for your loss. Or, you have my deepest sympathy. Or, blank will be greatly missed. OMG, I just realized that I forgot a whole item and this is etc. So don't say etc. Say etc. So this is when it is just too tedious or cliche to give all the details in full. So you just say etc, etc, etc. And we are now down to our top five English expressions that you may have been saying incorrectly all this time. But before that, if you're already getting value from this video, why don't you give me a thumbs up right now? 
And on we go to number five. Don't say, I could care less. I hear this expression said this way all the time, but I know for a fact that the person means that they have no more care to give. So why they don't say I couldn't care less is beyond me. But that is in fact the right way to say it. I couldn't care less. I have no more care to give. Number four, don't say tie me over. If what you mean to say is for someone or something to help sustain you through a difficult time, what you can say is tide me over. This expression actually refers to the moon's tide, which can keep boats moving even when there is not enough wind to do so. For example, if you can lend me $20, that will help tide me over until the next paycheck. Number three, don't say mute point. Because how can you make a point if you're silent, right? Instead, say moot point. Moot, by definition, is something irrelevant or a debatable view, so it holds no water in a specific argument. For example, I don't know why she keeps bringing that up. It's a moot point. 10 points for you if you know what Joey Tribbiani of Friends called this. That's right, a moo point because a cow's opinion doesn't matter. So close, Joe. So close. Number two, don't say all of a sudden. Please don't be lazy. Just get the preposition in there. Say all of a sudden or I'll make it even easier for you. Say suddenly. For example, all of a sudden, out of thin air, there he was. Or, suddenly, there he was. And the number one English expression that you may be saying incorrectly all this time is extract revenge, like you're extracting teeth. I know, I know, that would be really painful for your enemy and that in itself can be revenge already. But the expression is exact revenge. Exact when used as a verb, means to demand or to require, which is where the expression exact revenge comes from. It's demanding for payback. And there you have it, 10 English expressions that you may have been saying incorrectly all this time. Now, here's my challenge for you. Like all bad habits, saying these phrases correctly may take some time. So, please pick two expressions that you have the tendency to say incorrectly and use it intentionally for two weeks that will actually help you remember how to say these expressions correctly. And if you can, and if you're not too embarrassed, I would love it so much if you can share those two expressions that you will start working on down at the comment section down below. This is a community and we will help each other. Plus, if you know of any more expressions that are often said incorrectly, share it down at the comment section down below too. Next week, I will share 10 English expressions that you may have been writing incorrectly. Watch out for that. For now, if you have any questions, please do let me know down at the comment section down below and I will get back to you as soon as I can. That's a promise. And hey, before I let you go, please don't forget to hit the like button down below. And while you're down there, why don't you go ahead and subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. And also, tap that notification bell just so you know if I have anything new out. And please, if you have time, do share this video with your family and your friends, especially those you know will benefit from this video. And don't forget to connect with me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And with that, I'll wish you all a fantastic day and I'll see you in my next video. Cheers! Someone you know lost someone they love and you want to show your sympathy. When someone you know lost someone they love and you want to show your sympathy. I have done some research and unearth. Oh no.